about myself. Uh, I've been in the industry for the last uh, decade or so. Uh, and again, thanks to Ted, uh, never thought I would be in this industry, uh, particularly the threshold side, right? So uh, for the last decade or so, I've seen a paradigm shift on, on how data is being collected uh, and, and how threshold scan is being used and the adaptation of it and the challenges throughout the, the last decade. And I'm very, very happy and very glad to see how, how uh, the, these scanners have really changed and how we collect data, right? Um, you know, threshold scanning, it's, it's, it, it, it could cover a, a very detailed area, uh, but it's not, you know, uh, a mobile scanner, right? So we're not mapping uh, long corridors or, um, or anything like that. So yeah, so this presentation is very detailed as far as um, uh, productivity and how to increase productivity. Um, and productivity does not just start with, with, the, with, with scanning itself, right? So uh, if you have the right equipment or in equipment, I think productivity begins in the field, but also ends in the office, right? So uh, the goal is here is to acquire data and to deliver a, a perfectly uh, uniform, homogenized point cloud geo reference down to uh, survey control. And this presentation does get very detailed. Uh, it doesn't talk about products or anything. Um, so if, if you're a user of this product, um, it could be available in a PDF, right? So at the beginning, it's gonna go kind of fast. It talks, again, it talks about very detailed on how this, uh, the system is set up and what makes it part, uh, productive, right? So scanning itself, I don't think it's productive enough, right? It has to go uh, into post-processing, registration, um, uh, setting up control. So all that plays in a productivity. Uh, I've seen in the past where we can cover, I don't know, let's just say a quarter of a mile, right? A thousand feet of road in, in a day. But with, with uh, with, with the speed of uh, threshold laser scanning, or even you know any other systems, you can cover up to miles with a uh, uh, rope, which was never really unheard of in, in 10 years ago or five years ago with terrestrial laser scanning. Um, so yeah, we'll just get right into it. So it's a quick agenda. Uh, yes, of course, I'm with Regal, so the systems I, I uh, represent is the terrestrial scanner, which is a VZ400i. Uh, and I'm just gonna go very detailed in the settings, so I'm gonna go with that kind of quick. Uh, but again, it's available in a PDF if, if uh, you wanna take a closer look. Um, and then project planning, right? So in the past, again, I've seen a big shift on how we register our data, right? So the scan itself is very accurate, right? But it also, the data itself, geo-reference-wise, it can only get accurate as the control. So there's a, we, we came up with a new methodology to lay out your control accordingly. And I, an example I use today is in a mile with a road, right? So there's a good scale, right? So you do a mile, every other mile should be just about the same. Um, one of the, the key future for productivity on, on my example today is the onboard registration, right? So uh, these systems now, they're very sophisticated. They're not just collecting late, uh, uh, LIDAR anymore. You're collecting photogrammetry, you're collecting IMU data, you're collecting GPS data, and you're also uh, registering the scanner right on board, right? So all that still comes into productivity. And then post-registration, right? So the scan itself registered in real time, uh, but there's also post-registration when you have to tie the, the data set down to control. And I'll explain a little bit about that. And then also uh, removal uh, uh, noise tool, um, uh, sorry, uh, tools, um, moving cars and, and, and people walking by and such. Yeah, so the scan itself, uh, it's, it's, uh, we have designed it into like an app form. So everybody's familiar looking at iPhones and, and know what an app looked like. So simplicity is key, right? Uh, just going through some quick settings on this particular that I want to point out is, one second. This page right here. So yeah, so this is your uh, workflow scanning. This is your scanning configuration, right? So this allows you to select your measurement rate and also your point density. So at this particular setting, you're probably looking at about uh, seven centimeter at 100 um, um, meter range, right? So that's vertical and horizontal point spacing. And the time it takes for the scan is about 46 seconds. That's including imagery too as well. Again, productivity, time, speed, all that includes into productivity. And the next one I wanna show is the uh, registration tool. So. Uh, enabling the registration out in the field. So by the time you take this, the data off the scanner, your data is already registered. You just kind of take that and uh, bring it down to your server control, which we'll get into in the next couple of slides. Yeah, so this is just all of the settings that, uh, that allows you to um, implement as a workflow on the scanner itself. So when you create a project, you just select your workflow, whether it's indoor, outdoor, uh, linear uh, project, or you know, neighborhood project, or urban environment, or even forestry environment too as well. 
Again, this is very detailed, so uh, if you're a user of this product, um, it could be available in a PDF. So the project I had an example on, uh, I recently did just last month. Um, we did a one mile uh, road, uh, frontage road, two lane, east uh, and uh, westbound. Uh, we left approximately 16 control, right? So um, Ted, please don't shoot me, but yeah, one mile with the road, 16 survey control, right? So how do you quantify that? How do you, uh, you know, how, how, how do you justify, okay, you're scanning a mile with the road, you got 16 controls out there. Yep. Um, you know, you'll see right, with the sophistication of, of uh, you know, uh, improve uh, advanced algorithm into uh, planar surface matching and also least square fitting. Uh, yeah, we can get away with that and, and we can prove it and, and, you know, we can validate it. Uh, more importantly, we can spit it out in a, a 30 page report. Uh, because all, you know, all that has to be validated too as well. Yeah, so on this particular project, again, it's one mile with the road, two lane highway, uh, two lane frontage road, and laid out approximately 16 control. Um, we start the project on, on two to survey control. So beginning of the project, you want to start out on your control and you want to end a control, right? So we want to incorporate the traditional surveying, uh, just like when you um, laying out your control, you want to close the loop in a sense, right? So you want to start out on control, you want to end a control. And of, cor of course, you want to also have intermediate controls in the, between your scan project too as well. So on this case, we set controls approximately 800 feet uh, apart and um, uh, 800 feet, two sets of control, 800 feet apart on both sides of the road. Um, and this is our recommendation, my recommendation actually, on how to set control um, on, on such um, example. You know, so you want to. So here is uh, the project attribute. So we scan approximately 95 scan position. Of course, this is just picked up on a tripod. Uh, I think the time it took. Let me see. If I'll put a time in here. Yep. So yeah, you'll see 95. Uh, um, uh, scan positions here, and this is just walking out on a tripod, and this is just a topo planner. It's a great tool to use. Um, I recommend everybody to use it for uh, project planning. Of course, it doesn't give a very accurate, but when you go out there, you know, stuff changes and, and, and objects are in the way, so it's a good um, um, base map to, 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 to start a project. Yeah, so we want to, uh, when we hit a control, of course, we don't have to see a control from every scan positions, right? So we recommend to uh, hit the control at approaching and also departure, right? So this will give you a residual if that control has moved or not, because sometimes it does move, and if you, and if you only hit it one time, uh, you really cannot tell if it moved or not, because you know, in conditions where you got cars driving by, uh, when uh, it, could, it could move your tripod. So uh, by scanning it uh, at the, uh, approaching and then departure, you can uh, validate um, uh, in the software that if your control has moved or not. Yeah, so you can see, um, very lightly, all the triangles are the set of control. So you got one there, and you got a uh, set there, a set there, 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 and at towards the end. Again, it's about 800 feet apart, approximately. It could do 500 feet. Um, and of course, um, if you work with DOT, they might require uh, more um, controls out there. But nevertheless, um, we can get away with you know a mile with a road on 16 control. Um, this is some of the, 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 the newer uh, um, uh, tools that we have available right on, on the scanner, right? So we want to take the, the, the guesswork and also the, um, I was going to call it, I would have to say the user um, out of it, right? Because we don't want user uh, um, interface. We want everything to be automated. We want, we want the scanner to do its thing. So we want the, 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 the surveyor just to pick up the tripod, move it, and press start. So in the background itself, uh, it's able to uh, register all this data together, whether uh, you're indoor or outdoor, indoor, uh, when you're in a GPS denied area, the IMU takes over, but when you're outdoor in a GPS area, it uses that, so the scan itself uh, know where it's at. Uh, it's, uh, has automated uh, uh, leveling, so it's leveled, and it has a digital compass for orientation, so you know where you're at, you're leveled, you have a heading, and the only thing it needs to find then now is just surface matching. Just that simple. And again, all this is done right on board. Um, yep. So by at the end of the day, you, you, you do your project, you take the scanner back in the office. Uh, in principle, yeah, the scanner, everything should register all on its own. But if there was some uh, odd reason, uh, if it didn't register on its own, the software can also continue the registration too as well. So instead of running the uh, registration in the software uh, all over again, you can just pick up where you left off. You can see here on the left-hand side, 
Uh, all the positions that are registered has a globe next to it, and the one that are not registered does not have a globe next to it. So you can just highlight the neighboring scans, positions that has a globe next to it, and then select all the one that doesn't have a globe next to it, meaning it's not registered, and then continue the registration from there. And the registration uh, uh, processing um, allows you to pick your scenario too as well. So uh, for this thing to work efficiently and effectively, uh, you have to uh, pick your scanning scenario, right? So what I mean by that is if you're in a, a unurban versus urban area, the parameters are set differently. So looking at voxels and also uh, planar surfaces and search radius uh, in an urban area, yep, you, it would search much further to find uh, common planes, uh, but in a, a non-urban area like a forestry, um, you know, the search radius is very shallow and, and, and short because, you know, there's really no planes out there. But nevertheless, uh, the planar surface doesn't mean it has to be a flat wall or a surface, right? It could be uh, a, rock, a, a surface of a, a rock or, or a, a tree, right? So um, the, the automatic onboard registration works really well in pretty much in any kind of um, environment. And the last process of this workflow is the, uh, the software side, right? So uh, we can take the data from the scanner, it's all registered, uh, even has RTK capability too as well, where you can get correction directly from a base station or from a VRS, a local VRS network or a paid uh, network too as well. And then the last part is that once all the data is all sits together, just think of it as a puzzle, right? So you take the data from the scanner, it's, it's a big puzzle that you build on a table, and you take that puzzle, and then you want to shift it down to... Um, uh, your control, right? So it does uh, orientation translation uh, down to your server control. And don't worry, all the reports are all there. Um, so there's no, you know, black box kind of uh, registration. Yeah, so the workflow itself is uh, step one, bringing your targets, which you collect out in the field. So that what the scanner sees, so the scanner doesn't see a point on the ground, it sees a representation of the point, which is represented by a target, right? It could be a cylindrical reflective target or a flat target. Um, you select the target types you want to use, and then your controls are set right in. Sorry, uh, your, 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 your targets in the field are set right in. And the next pro process is to bring in your uh, survey control. So there you go, you have a list of survey control. Um, and then the next part is to find the link between the two, right? So you have your uh, field uh, control, which is our targets, and then you have your survey control, which is just the XYZ points on the ground, and then it finds the link between the two. Okay. Again, this is very detailed, so uh, for, for, for users of, of this instrument, um, yep, it, it, this should help. Yep, so you want to also mark your point as true, right? So there's an option to make it uh, true and false. Uh, true, uh, only, only mark true if, you are, um, if your controls has been leveled, right? So always level your control. Uh, you can't just go out there with uh, RTK and, and inspect the data to, the, the, to be perfectly registered to it. And, and no gaps between the data set if you don't level it, especially in any kind of corridor mapping, uh, linear or, or even, you know, surveying a, a, a building. Always level your control. Very, very important. Yeah, and then the last part is that we do a uh, translation rotation, right? So uh, we uh, execute a block adjustment. So it just takes the whole entire puzzle, which is all the scans uh, positions linked together, and then it ties it down, which does a translation and rotation. And then the last part is running step five. So this is, we call this the bundle adjustment, right? So this is where uh, it does the fine tuning of all the data, all the planes, thousands, a hundred thousands of planes, depending on the project scale. And it also turns out control. So when you mark your control uh, to be true, it does, it emphasizes and it puts a heavier weight on the can itself, on the control itself, so that it doesn't, uh, so that it doesn't, um, it's not biased towards the planes, right? So there's way more planes out there versus your 16 control. So by putting the control to be true, it puts a heavier weight on, 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 on the can. It may break up the scan a little bit, but it shouldn't because, you know, the scan itself, it's accurate to within millimeters. Um, so yeah, so by, by, by saying, hey, I want this project to register, but to specifically uh, uh, um, um, honor the, uh, the XYZ uh, from the control. And of course, uh, the last part um, is the filtering, right? So uh, there's been some new filtering tools. I've seen some really cool one classification tools. Um, we don't do any of that. We don't do any really any kind of classification. Uh, but what two new tools I want to show uh, that I'm very excited about 
is the uh, dynamic points and the mark single points, right? So this takes care of all the cars driving by, all the people walking by. Um, as long as, um, and it's very simple in how this works too, right? So it takes one scan and this is the vehicle right in front of me. And then on the next scan, the vehicle is not there anymore. That, that vehicle is gone. And just as simple as that. There's, there's really no unique thing behind this. Um, and then the result itself is very compelling, right? So this is the same project that we did it on. You can see this is just the, the data with all the, 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 the cars. And that's afterwards, right? So nobody's going to sit there and remove all these vehicles, right? Sure, we can remove everything, but we may need the power lines. We may need the poles. We may need the stop sign, the manholes, whatever. So this tool really focuses on dynamic objects and objects that are moving, which is very unique to, to what we have offered um, to this day. All right, and so here's a report. So uh, what you're seeing here is all the, uh, is the one mile with the road on the, on the black um, image here. And then uh, the, 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 the points on the numbers on top are the survey control that we use out in the field. So you got one mile of the road and 16 control. Uh, and this report is pulled directly from the software. So after it generates its, um, um, its last um, step, which is step five, the fine tuning, uh, you get a very robust report that, that you, know, uh, you can share if needed. Um, and here is the control points, uh, the residuals, right? So there's residuals on everything. On every single point and planes that's being used to match together, uh, there's, there's deltas on the X, Y, and Z uh, value, right? So you can see here the report itself, the accuracy itself is very, very nice. And um, yeah, and here's a more statistical report on, on, the, uh, uh, on the control itself. So each control you see on the right-hand side, you see the standard deviation, the max and the mean. Uh, but more importantly, uh, the bar on the left-hand side shows that everything is well within uh, 300 of a foot. All right, so yeah, sure, the reports is nice, right? So those are numbers, those are numbers written on things, but we always got to visualize the data too as well. Um, so here is just a position that uh, I selected, and um, you can see the guy uh, standing next to the uh, rod with the point on the ground. The point on top represents the field um, control. And then the points at the bottom represent uh, the control that was surveyed uh, and that was given directly uh, from the surveyor. You can see uh, you, the points matches right on the ground, right? And the points on top because I added rod height to it, and that's all. You know? And you can pull all the points in. Uh, this, uh, the, the, the software itself, itself allows you to do QA, QC checks on, um, on, on, on um, um, uh, yeah, checkpoints, checkpoints. But Tobodot also does that too very, very well as well. Okay, yeah, so the project uh, uh, summary, right? So again, we did one, uh, it was one mile with the road. I think we scanned in total three hours. Again, three hours and one mile with terrestrial scanner. So um, that speeds mean everything. Again, productivity does not just start and end in the field. It also takes all the way back to the office too as well. Yeah, so the project attributes here, you can see um, very uh, uh, cover a lot of area, uh, validate our uh, sur uh, survey. Um, and with the minimum amount of control set as possible uh, that we can get away and still, you know, produce a very uh, good uh, registered uh, point cloud. Um, and in the past, you know, I've seen it where we started where we had to uh, resection every single scan position, right? So every position had to see three control points. I totally believe in that. I'm not going away from that by any means. But uh, but, but with the new workflow and, and the improvements of registration tools and planar surface matching and least square fitting, um, we're able to reduce that. And mainly, you know, that also affects cost too as well. So you can send, any, you can send a, a team out there and, 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 and survey, you know, uh, 50 control points in a mile. Sure, you can do that, no problem. Uh, but you know, by reducing that, you're really saving a lot on cost too as well. Okay, and that's it, thank you. Any uh, questions? Okay, um, thank you, Tan. Appreciate it very much. Any, any questions? Spent a lot of quality time with the BZ400 in the field. It's uh, another world, another lifetime. <laughs> um, okay, uh, next, and I'm a little confused. Uh, David, help me out. So, system provider technology presentation, and then there's what's next in mobile mapping at 1120. So, what is this a break time? Oh, what's next in mobile mapping? Okay, fine. All right, so, and that, good. Okay, sorry, got a little confused. Um, 
so and that would be i'm sorry for so jason ellis yeah sure so jason What's that? Okay, you're not sure. <laughs> yeah, it's it's Lou Waiters. A lot, you know, it's uh, it got messed up a little bit. But is Jason here? No. All right. 